Chrysler's electronic lean burn engine ignition system represents the most advanced engine control system in the United States auto industry. But in spite of the highly sophisticated circuitry in the heart of the electronic computer, servicing the system is remarkably uncomplicated. In the words of the chief engineer in charge of lean burn development, Engines equipped with the electronic lean burn ignition system are actually no more difficult to service than conventional engines. In fact, they're even simpler to service in some ways. There's no vacuum advance unit to worry about. And beginning with the 77 model year, there isn't any centrifugal advance mechanism either. The carburetor is adjusted just the same as you've done in the past with an exhaust emission analyzer. In addition, the lean burn system is extremely reliable and has a fail-safe feature not offered by any other system. In spite of the lean burn system's greater reliability, Eventually, you may get a car that won't start, or that runs poorly or uses too much fuel. So let's take a look at these problems and see what to do about them. To help make it easy, we've broken the basic problems down into just four areas. Failure to start, poor performance, sudden high idle speed, and poor fuel economy. And we've made some easy to follow step-by-step -step troubleshooting charts that make problem diagnosis fast and simple. Testing for failure to start begins just as it would on any other car. You look for a spark. If you get a spark at the coil wire, also check for arcing at the coil tower by increasing the distance the spark has to jump. If arcing occurs, correct it, or if necessary, replace the coil. If the spark is okay, make sure it's getting through the distributor and wires to the spark plugs. If it is, the ignition system is not the cause of the failure to start. If the spark is weak, intermittent, or there's no spark, proceed to chart one, the failure to start test. As test preparation, measure and record the battery voltage for use later. Now let's see if this voltage is getting to the spark control computer. First, pull the connector from the coolant temperature switch, turn the ignition key on, and maintain the carburetor switch in the open position with a cardboard insulator. Connect your voltmeter negative to ground and measure the voltage at point A, the carb switch on the solenoid side. Voltage at this point should be at least 5 volts, but not more than 10 volts. More than 10 volts indicates that the computer is not grounded, so check terminal 2 of the computer for a good ground connection. If you get less than 5 volts at point A on the carb switch, turn the key off and pull the dual connector from the computer. Turn the key on again and measure the voltage at terminal 4. Obviously, you should have voltage here with the key on. If you don't, there must be an open, short, or poor connection in the wiring between the battery and terminal 4. When you do have battery voltage at terminal 4, you know power is going to the computer. Now let's see if it's coming out. Turn the ignition off and disconnect the single connector from the computer. Since terminal 11 connects directly to the carb switch, you can check the continuity with your ohmmeter. Good computer connections at this stage indicate a faulty computer. Let's review that again. If we have power to the computer, plus a good ground return from the computer, then the only thing that can prevent that five volts from appearing at the carb switch is a faulty computer. You'll proceed to step seven only when you have the correct five volts or more at the carb switch, but the engine still won't start. In step seven, you'll check for voltage through the coil primary and the ballast resistor. Steps 8 and 9 are easy tests of the start pickup and its wiring. In steps 10 and 11, you check the start pickup air gap using a non-magnetic feeler gauge and once again try to start the engine. If it won't start, install a new computer and try again. At this point, if the engine still fails to start, reinstall the original computer and repeat the test procedures because you more than likely missed something. you'll find that performance complaints with lean burn sound just the same as complaints do about conventional engines. The engine misses. The car sort of stumbles. It's like hesitation. The engine dies out on acceleration. I get an engine surge. 
generally uh, poor drivability. While it's possible that a defect somewhere in the ignition could cause any of these problems, it's also true that the fuel system could be the cause. As a matter of fact, we found that with lean burn engines, it is the fuel system that's at fault in most cases of poor performance. With that in mind, it'll pay you to stick to the following procedure whenever you have a poor performance problem with a lean burn car. First, put the engine on the scope. You'll quickly learn if all cylinders are firing, if the distributor cap and rotor are good, and if the coil is good. With that, you've already checked one half of the lean burn system. Step number two is also familiar to you. Running an exhaust emission analysis and balancing the carburetor. Once you've done this, you'll usually find that the original problem is gone. But if you can't adjust the engine to specifications on the exhaust emission analyzer, then go to chart two, testing for poor performance. There you'll find three basic tests. Test A checks the run pickup circuit. Test B will check the start timer advance schedule. Test C checks out the throttle advance schedule. Test A is easy. Start the engine and run it for two minutes to allow the temporary additional advance, which occurs during starting, to return to basic timing. Now, disconnect the start pickup at the connector. If the engine continues to run, the run pickup is okay, and you can go to test B. If the engine stops, that means the engine was running on the start pickup, so we have to check the run pickup. Reconnect the start pickup and turn the key off. Disconnect the dual connector from the computer and use your ohmmeter to check the resistance between terminals 3 and 5. This is a direct circuit through the run pickup coil. Any resistance from 150 ohms to 900 ohms indicates a good pickup. In step 3, you look for a shorted pickup circuit by grounding one ohmmeter lead and touching each pickup lead. There should be no continuity to ground, of course. Now check the air gap and repeat step one to see if the engine will run on the run pickup. If it won't, try a new computer and repeat step one. If the engine will now run on the run pickup, you can go on to test B. But if it doesn't run on the run pickup with a new computer, reinstall the original computer and repeat test A from the beginning. The lean burn system has a built-in program for additional spark advance during startup for better cold engine performance and to prevent die-out. This additional advance should automatically return to basic timing within 90 seconds. Here's how to check it. Connect a variable timing light to the engine and have a helper set the parking brake. As an extra precaution, have him hold the service brakes on as well as he starts the engine. Quickly snap the throttle open and closed and place the gear selector in drive. Immediately adjust the timing light so the basic timing is seen at the timing indicator. The meter should show the amount of additional advance according to specifications. Continue to watch the timing for 90 seconds, at the same time adjusting the timing light to maintain the basic timing signal. The additional advance should slowly reduce to the basic timing signal after 90 seconds. If not, replace the computer and repeat the test. You know that with the ELB system, the throttle position transducer senses both throttle position and the speed at which the throttle is opened. These signals go immediately to the computer, which advances the timing proportionately. Test C checks both the transducer and the computer for these responses. Before making this test, be sure the transducer is properly adjusted as shown in chart number four in the reference book. Step one checks the transducer coil winding resistance and the wiring to the computer at terminals 9 and 10. A good transducer will show from 50 to 90 ohms resistance. With a good transducer, you then check for proper transducer action. Reconnect all the wiring and turn the ignition on, but don't start the engine. Connect a voltmeter negative to a good engine ground and touch the positive lead to either terminal of the transducer. Watch the meter as you open the throttle all the way, then close it. There should be about a one-half to two-volt change at both terminals with the throttle movement. If you do not get the voltage change, do not replace the transducer yet, since the problem may be caused by the computer. Go on to step four. Position the throttle linkage on the fast idle cam, then ground the carb switch with a jumper wire. Remove the connector from the transducer and connect it to a spare transducer, which you know to be good. Position the core of the transducer fully in so it bottoms out. 
start the engine and let it run for 90 seconds to run out the temporary starting advance. Now pull the core out about one inch. On the 400 inch engine, for example, this should cause a timing advance of 7 to 12 degrees at an air temperature of approximately 75 degrees or a 4 to 7 degree advance at an air temperature of around 100 degrees. You check for this advance with a variable timing light. If the advance is within specifications, move the core all the way back in. The timing should return to the basic timing setting plus a small additional advance caused by the centrifugal. Your final test of the throttle advance schedule is in step 7. Adjust your timing light meter to zero. Have a helper move the core of the test transducer in and out five or six times very quickly while you watch the timing marks. You should see an additional advance of 7 to 12 degrees for about one second and then a return to the original timing. If the advance does not occur, replace the computer. The ELB tests are similar for both complaints, poor fuel economy and an unusually high idle speed. You'll find a handy chart for making these tests in your reference book. All the point-to-point -point tests you've seen in this film and much more can be done automatically in just a few minutes with the new Lean Burn System Analyzer. The analyzer is programmed to service all 1976 and 77 Lean Burn engines and is scheduled to be ready for ordering before 1977 announcement time. We'll tell you more about it later.